hazelnut. And if you feel you'd like some help for yourself or a family member, you can call Cruz Bereavement Support. Here's the number. It's uh, 0808 808 1677. I'll say that again. It's 0808 808 1677. Or visit them online, cruise.org.uk. This is BBC Radio Surrey. It's Tuesday morning. It's 20 to 8. Peter Gordon in for James Cannon today, but James returns to the airwaves tomorrow morning. Now, racism in cricket has reared its head when the cricketer Azim Rafiq talked about his time at Yorkshire recently. He told a committee of MPs last week that English cricket is institutionally racist. My aim was to try and see if my experience can help others. Clearly, the word institutional um, is something no one wants to be associated. Uh, institutional racism is something no one wants to be associated with. Um, end of 2017, um, we had a really difficult pregnancy, um, and through that um, through that time. The treatment that I received from some of the club officials were inhuman. Um, they weren't really bothered about the fact that I was at training one day and I get a phone call to say there's, there's no heartbeat. Well, what can a, a local sports club do to tackle racism? Is there a, a wider role for them in the community? Now, last month, a special event was held at Aldershot Town Football Club designed to bring together different sections of the local community. More than 100 people from across the town got together at a dinner organised by the club. And Walid Khan is a director of Aldershot Town FC. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning to you. How are you? Yeah, fine, thank you. And uh, nice to have you on. Now, that sounds like a good event. So how did it go? Yeah, the event was great, thank you, Peter. Uh, it was um, one game, one community, effectively, where we wanted to get um, uh, all the football stakeholders, fans and community, um, together with Fans for Diversity, uh, Football Supporters Association, and kick it out, and just try and use football as a vehicle to bring the community to, together uh, to, and try to bring some positive change um, along the lines. Yeah. So the positive change, obviously, with the idea, the motivation behind it all. Now, now that you've done that particular event, is this something you're going to be doing regularly, would you say? Very much so, yes. I mean, the feedback afterwards from the various uh, people that attended uh, has now led to us looking at um, taking this forward uh, with um, various stakeholders and various people uh, to have maybe bite-sized um events again to continue with this process of making people aware, uh, trying to educate people and more than anything else, bringing people together. Yeah, would you say within the community that, you know, there are divisions in, in all the shop? What's your, what's your take on that? Um, do, do you know what? Um, it's difficult for me to say because I'm so focused since I've been involved with all the short town football club. Um, the vision has been just to unite everybody uh, you know we are a focal point at the club and uh, we've kind of wanted to use that uh, beacon if you like to try to bring all community together so looking at um, whether there are divides or not is something that I've not really kind of even focused on my focus has been as is the clubs um, to bring people together uh, as much as we can and, and well you know, how important can sport be though in, in joining a community together? Do you know what? I think it's, it's, it's so important. I was reflecting upon this last night in, 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 in the times uh, when I grew up in the 1970s um, and um, racism was obviously very rife back then. Um, but I, I, I reflected that sport was actually what brought me into the main community. Uh, all of my friends when they saw I, I might have been of a different colour, but when I was playing sport for the school football team, the cricket team, um, I just became one of them, if you like. And I think school plays a very, very big part in that, now more so than ever, because you've got it so diversified and people are entering into sport, into football. You've got women's football, um, which is now playing a big part. And we're also getting faith-based groups getting involved in football. So I think sport in general, is a good vehicle to be used to bring people together. Uh, and a football club, of course, is, you know, is, is 
flat bang really right there um, in in the town. I was I, I was actually at a meeting at uh, Princess Hall a couple of weeks ago, and I took a little bit of time. I was a bit early, so I took a little bit of time to to once again walk around the town. Of course, lots of changes going on, the regeneration project, and everything else that that's happened. It's um, it's a vibrant place though, isn't it, Aldershot? It's certainly becoming that, Peter. Yes, indeed. Um, and obviously, it's an army town from um, from uh, from the past, uh, which obviously saw its numbers being reduced. But now, with the regeneration of the town centre, we've been involved in that as well. We've been we, we've been invited to go and participate and uh, just come up with suggestions. What can we do to make the town more vibrant, bring people back? Um, there's a lot of good work going on, indeed, in trying in trying to get that. To get Aldershot back to what it used to be, in terms of a vibrant town, an army town, but now more so with the engagement of other communities uh, as well. Uh, and we're fingers crossed we will play a major part in that as well, because we're looking to regenerate the ground as well, uh, with a view to uh, making it more community-based than it is currently. Yeah, and of course, you know um, the, the the changes at the football club. I mean, I. Not the rage myself here. Well, either I um, went back to the uh, the original uh, um, uh, league team, of course, uh, of Aldershot before Aldershot Town 1992 Limited uh, uh, yes. rose from the ashes. I was all around at that time, and um, right. of course the football club, you know, it strives on, keeps going, and indeed you are playing tonight, uh, Torquay at home, and of course the the shots got their first win at home since May this year as well, didn't they? We did. It was a great win, uh, Peter. Thank you. Yes, we've got Torquay. Another big game. They lost on Saturday, so they'll be up to come and um, show us what they're about. A great win against Grimsby. Mm. Um, my role is the academy director, so I was so proud of having three of my academy boys play, uh, two making their debuts and uh, creating that vibe of um, energy to get us that win. So we're hoping for the same tonight. Yes. Absolutely. Well, listen, uh, Wally, this has uh, been great to talk to you. Lovely to, uh, to, to have a chat. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you for having me, Peter. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. That's uh, Wally Khan, who's the director of Aldershot Town FC. And uh, just a reminder, Aldershot's match against Torquay and actually Woking's match against Weymouth will be on the BBC Sport website tonight. Uh, it's BBC Radio Surrey. It's 13 minutes to wait on the way some travel news. Also, we'll look at the 